The trade deadline has come and gone, and Nationals fans, if you are asking for bullpen help, you got your wish. Welcome into the Mass on All Access podcast. Bobby Blanco, Paul Mancano with you as always. He was looking for the dramatic entrance if you're watching on Mass and Nationals or Mass on All Access Facebook. If you're just listening to us, you're lucky because you didn't get to see whatever that shenanigan was. Um, <laughs> Is it called a slow turn, Bobby? Slow it, turn uh, and drop the old phone. That's, yeah. that's what that's called. That's uh, smooth. Smooth. Smooth as the... That's, that's how I got my prom like. date. Yeah. Junior. Real smooth. High school. smooth. We've been doing uh, fifty accents, fifties accents all day, and uh, <laughs> tell you what, kid, you look as smooth as a cucumber. And I'll tell you, I lost my mind about twenty four hours ago. <laughs> yeah, it's been what, a long day. Once the Mark, the Mets traded for Marcus Stroman, I said. What? <laughs> now this is cuckoo. I said what? This is cuckoo. <laughs> um, if you're following along again, Mass and All Access Facebook, Mass and Nationals Facebook, and also catch the podcast on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or SoundCloud. Um, if you're not able to watch us on Facebook, but Paul, last 24 hours have been a whirlwind. This has got to be like my, at least my sixth cup of coffee <laughs> just today. We did a got to help long, your digestive system, by the way. <laughs> did an hour long Facebook live show today covering the entire trade deadline, and right before the, about an hour or so before the deadline came, we've got some news: Nationals acquiring three relief pitchers, bullpen help on its way for the stretch run, the final two months of the season. Let's see. They get right-handed pitcher Daniel Hudson from the Blue Jays for Kyle Johnson, a right-hander who is also the Nationals' 27th overall uh, prospect, according to MLB Pipeline. Then they make two separate deals with the Mariners, but we can kind of just clump them all into one. Lump them into one. Left-handed pitcher Rowenus Elias from the Mariners um, for two prospects: right-handed pitcher Elvis Alvarado and uh, left-hander Tyler. Oh, Taylor. Excuse me, Taylor Gube (laughs) Gilbu. How do you say that? Gilbo? Gil, I don't Gilbo? know. Gilbo. I botched it Taylor on the actual Gilbo. show with 250 people Gilbo, watching. Taylor Gilbo, number 15th so. prospect from the Nationals. Gilbo. And then Hunter Strickland, old friend of the Nationals and uh, former National Bryce Harper, coming from the Mariners, right-hander for number 21 overall prospect, righty Aaron Fletcher. Paul, the fans are asking for it. We've been asking for it. Bullpen help. We saw the bullpen kind of falter today, even though it was... Not a familiar face doing so in Sean Doolittle, giving up a home run in the 10th inning. But help is on its way. What do you think of the moves? I just can't wait for the Hunter Strickland Bryce Harper brawl in September. Five games in D.C. against the Phillies in September. Five. It's, a lot, it's a lot of time for uh, tempers to flare once yeah. again. Yeah, he's he's that guy from that move. Uh, that also ended Michael Morse's career, Yeah, sadly. Um, but that that is kind of hilarious that they end up with him and the Nationals also no longer have Bryce Harper. That, mm-hmm. that, that kind of just changed. Just the missed them by a couple months. Look, the Nats had to get somebody. We thought they were probably going to get two guys. They wound up getting three. Um, I think... The fact that Hunter Strickland has missed most of the season means they probably got him at a slight discount um, at that point. Uh, I think probably, look, none of these guys are Shane Green, who unfortunately went to a division rival in the Braves. Um, none of these guys are lights out. None of these guys are even of the caliber, I think, that uh, that Sean Doolittle was when they got him two years ago, or maybe even Brandon Kinsler or Ryan Matson two years ago. But they are... Guys, they are arms. That <laughs> they you are can arms. Throw they out are there. different people. Um, they needed somebody. They needed just people that you could throw out there. They still have the worst bullpen ERA in baseball, and it's crazy that this team is still competing, still above five hundred, still at the top of the NL wild card standings despite all of their bullpen issues. They're still a really good team despite having literally the worst bullpen in baseball. Yeah. So we've seen what how good they can be when they all of their things are clicking even with a bad bullpen. They they increase it just a little bit. I still think that they're a good team. It's not these moves aren't going to blow your socks off, but they they needed guys and they got guys. I think they're definitely still a good team. They've been playing really well. I mean, I think what's the stat? I don't. I think it still holds true even with the last two losses against the Braves that they have the best record in the Major League Baseball since May twenty fourth. I yeah. believe. I I'm think sure the they Nationals do. Nationals tweet that up pretty frequently. Um, but I think this is a great team. I mean, look at these two losses. I mean, they they smack down the Braves. Anthony Rendon comes up huge on Monday with a grand slam. Uh, yesterday, you know, bad start to get in a dig dig. Dug a deep hole thanks to uh, Eric Fetty, but then they come back. I mean, the final score was what eleven to eight. Yeah. So they at least fought back. I was in three runs uh, near the end of the game, and then today forced 
uh, extra innings and Sean Doolittle, like I said, the guy you least expected to gave up the game tying home or gave up the game winning home run eventually. So I mean, this is still a good team that's fighting and bullpen help is what they need. And like you said, they're arms. They're yeah. they're different guys. They're someone that let's try something else. We know what we have here, yeah. right? You know, we know what we have in Rodney, Doolittle, Matt Grace, uh, Wander Suero. Let's try to throw something else in the mix and see if this works for the next two months to try to either A, catch the Braves, or B, lock down that wild card spot. And you mentioned those four names. Is there anybody aside from those guys that you trust in any kind of <laughs> relief situation in a September game or a playoff game? And you can't, I, I would argue, probably can't even trust Matt Grace. Um, so that's down to three guys. I mean, who else can you trust yeah. in situations like that? So they just need guys who have proven experience and who are not just not going to blow a game for you. Yeah. They're not just going to, because they, these bats will keep you in any game. We saw it, like you said, Bobby, we saw it in both of these losses back to back to the Braves, which were tough losses, but the bats kept them in it. They battled back in the ninth in two straight games, almost coming back two days ago and tying it up. Yes. Uh, today. So, I mean, that's they, they're going to keep you in games. They just need the bullpen not to be literally the worst. <laughs> right. If they can just not be, be literally the, the worst, worst right. then they will be okay. Um, and Daniel Hudson, Hunter Strickland, and Rowenus Elias are literally are not the literal worst. They're the, uh, Hudson is actually having a pretty good year, has a three ERA right now. And, of course, the Nats gave up Johnston, who doesn't sound – he's never pitched above high A. He's 23. Um, it doesn't sound like that's you know that, that that's pretty much nothing yeah. at that point. And Hudson is um, on a expiring deal, so if he doesn't work out, he can walk this off season and no harm, no foul. Um, the other two guys are controllable after this year. Strickland is the righty. Rowenus Elias is the lefty. Elias has like a four forty ERA. He actually had a three five five ERA coming into July. Had a terrible month of July when he had an eight ERA. Uh, but they're just banking on that being a fluke, I guess, at this point, yeah. and that Elias can get back to it, and that Elias can uh, reverse those weirdly reverse splits that he has had against lefties. And then Strickland, the, you know, if you see the 8 ERA, keep in mind it's in four games, and he missed most of the season, has missed, you know, the, almost the entire first half of the season and 100 games plus uh, with the Mariners um, after having a lat injury. So... There are three guys that, uh, you know, you can throw out into situations and they're not going to blow the games for you. And we talked about the kind of restrictions that Mike Rizzo was is, is, was dealing with in, in this trade deadline. Obviously, the lack of high, highly touted prospects in the system. You know, we knew yeah. he wasn't give up a Carter Keyboom or a Luis Garcia. So how do you find offers, guys that can are, are fair trades with some of your lower prospects? You know, your your the top prospects that were only given up, like I said, were you know a twenty one overall, fifteen overall, and twenty seven. You know, no one out inside. Yeah, you're inside your top fifteen. Your your fifteenth was as high as you went in terms of giving up guys, and then obviously having to stay under the luxury tax. And he was able to do that. And we thought he's going to pull like a magic trick in order to do this. Like you said. These aren't guys that will blow the name out of the waters, but they're new names. They're yeah. fresh arms. They're someone different. Solid season. Hudson actually doing a little more digging uh, once the deal was made. His That three flat ERA is actually inflated with his one start. He has one start on the season. I guess he used <laughs> as an opener type situation. But his re- ERA as a reliever is actually 2.87. In 47 innings, and then break it down by inning. I'm I'm thinking possible innings where we'll see him participate. Yeah. In the sixth, zero runs in over seven innings. Mm-hmm. In the seventh inning, 2.8 ERA over just uh, eight and two thirds innings. And in the eighth, where I think he'll ideally slot, setting up for Sean Doolittle. Yep. Just a 2.16 ERA in over 16 uh, and two thirds innings. So, uh, a guy that has been able to slide into spots that the Nationals need him to slide into and be productive. And, Bobby, your phrase, favorite phrase coming into today? Takes two to tango. There it is. And there were a lot of teams that were not on the dance floor. No. Oh. This trade deadline. You're disappointed about it. I was. They were sitting off to the side, acting like seventh graders, just not <laughs> wanting to dance, hanging out with their friends, drinking a little bit of punch. Yeah. That's just like... Kids from Stranger Things season I feel like one. They were not too cool to from, be here. Yeah, kids from Stranger Th- Things season one, not season three. You know, they they're season not, three, they're they're not ready too, to a little too teenagey. Not ready to mingle right. with uh, you know with people. Yeah, three um, inches. So 
there were a lot of teams like the Giants. It's like, oh, maybe the Nats can get Will Smith. Maybe they can get any number of these great Giants relievers. The Giants are like, nah, JK, we're not going to trade anybody uh, except for Drew Pomerantz. I mean, so there were so many teams like that that just didn't trade guys. That just, I don't know whether they think they're competing are delusional about it. Like, there's, there were a lot of teams... Like, the Mets had a chance to trade Wheeler and Syndergaard, and they didn't do it. And there are a number of, of instances of that, of teams across the league that, for whatever reason, delude themselves into competing um, and and didn't trade off these guys. Well, you so talk about Mets and Syndergaard. Like, for a while, the first part of this trade deadline fiasco, the Mets and the Reds were the only buyers. Yeah. And it's like, what do you, why are you guys buying? So <laughs> yeah. it was just a very confusing, odd... Yeah trade deadline to begin with. So there really were not that many options out there for them to go and get. It is frustrating, and I want to get into all of the deals that the division rivals made, that yeah. the NL East teams made. It is frustrating that one of the guys that we tab, that we pegged as one of the big arms out there in the bullpen um, went to the Braves in yeah. Shane Green. Yeah. Um, I think he would have been a... You know, these guys are upgrades, but they're minor upgrades. I think he would have been a major upgrade for their bullpen. Absolutely. And we knew that the Braves had a much, much, much deeper system, maybe the best system in all of baseball right now. Uh, and they were able to swing that deal, and the Nationals weren't. So that is frustrating. But aside from that, compare considering what was out there, what was available, the kind of guys that were being traded at the deadline – the, the Nats came out of this okay. Yeah, and I, I think it's also kind of funny. I mentioned on the Mass and All Access show today. Um, How'd you, know, you like that, being behind the It behind was fun. The board. You know, for the first time, I think it went pretty well. Behind the board and also, uh, you know. Yeah, I like that setup. I like the setup of having you over here, social media guru Olivia Witherite right here, kind of taking fan the comments. The triumvirate, yeah. And then throwing me behind the behind the scenes. I, I kind of like that. It gives sort of more of like a full digital access, access show which I, I enjoyed. But like I, I mentioned that it was kind of funny that the Nationals almost forced the Braves' hand like in real time because yeah. like we said, today's game, the noon, the noon game, the Nationals tied the game in the ninth, knocked out the Braves' closer. Now they traded for uh, – oh, I'm going to forget his name. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, uh, Chris Martin. Chris Martin yesterday, excuse me, of or course, great, this week. Great cold place. And was, not a, right, and was not able to uh, be ready uh, – with the team for today's game. So yeah. they knocked out whoever it was in the ninth. And I mean, who knows? I'm sure the Braves were already talking. Yeah, they were. The, like the, I know. <laughs> but it's also just kind of funny that you see that happen on the yeah. screen and then you look at computer. Oh, the Braves just got Shane Green. They must be watching this game too. So <laughs> the Nationals almost like forced the Braves hand being like, yeah, your bullpen's not that much better than ours either. You yeah. guys need help too. So you and you have a much better farm system. We're going to go get Shane Green. Well, and here's breaking news, too. Literally no bullpens are good right now. Yeah. Like, literally none. Yeah. Like, there are, uh, like, five bullpens, you can say, are really good. Beyond that, every other bullpen is, like, an ERA over four. Okay. And I know the Nats literally have the worst, but there are nobody is good Who's right the now. Best, who has the best bullpen amongst the division leaders? Amongst division leaders, yeah. the Yankees still have a, a really good bullpen. Yeah. They're probably top five in baseball. I don't know exactly. But, like, I'm thinking, like, the Giants have been probably yeah, consistently the best bullpen in all of baseball. They're not even a, a wild card. The team. Astros have been has have had a really good bullpen. But beyond that, it's Offense just it's, there are no good bullpens <laughs> yeah. around baseball, pretty much. It's just a trend right now. So, you know, the... the um, it is frustrating, like I said, that the Nats didn't get one of the top guys available, but there were only maybe one or two top guys available. Um, other than the Shane Green trade with the the Braves, you mentioned the Chris Martin trade. Mm -hmm. um, the Phillies went out. They got Corey Dickerson from the Pirates. Yep. The Phillies also got Jason Vargas. And, of course, the Mets got Marcus Stroman. I don't think we need to Braves spend— Braves also got Mark Melanson. Braves got Mark Melanson. Where do you think these three? I'm not. I'm sorry. I I I know. The, I can't mention the Mets. I I know they won five straight. I don't think they. We need to talk about them. I don't think they're in the mix. Do you? No. Get closer to 500. Then but, we'll, we'll talk. Yeah, we'll kick. We'll kick them out for right now. Of these three teams that are near the top of the division, who do you think came out of the trade deadline the best? Bobby? I think it's got to be the Braves. I think you get Shane Green and a proven veteran like Mark Melanson. I'm not entirely 
positive on his numbers this season. I Having a pretty he, good year, like a three nine. That's year. solid. I mean, I, and I know he struggled his first year out of DC with the Giants, but I, I think you get one of the top. You get one of the top names on the market. A guy that, especially a guy that was being targeted by your division rivals. Yeah. That's that's coming away with a, a big, pretty big trade deadline, and they addressed the need. They got one of the big names out there, and they had the means to do it. I mean, that's kind of like the game yeah. we were playing with. We knew the Nationals might not be able to afford a guy like Shane Green, a guy like Will Smith with the Giants, but that's just the way it is. And different factors, obviously, because of ownership wanting to stay under the luxury tax, but then you look at the farm systems, the Braves just have a much better farm system. That's what they've been building towards for the ca- past couple of years. Yeah. So they had the means to deal to deal from that system to get a guy like Shane Green and and hopefully this they're, what they're hoping is it's going to catapult them to an even larger lead in the division and back-to-back division titles. Yeah, and I think this week and this the past few days have been frustrating. Um, for the Nationals fans because not only did you lose two games to the Braves um, in back-to-back days, but like you said, the Braves made major moves at the deadline. The um, Nats fall back to six and a half games out of first place. They're back in a tie with the Phillies for that division. Look, there are two months of the season left, but the Braves are really good. They are clearly right now better than the Nationals, and they just help bolster one of the weaker parts of their team. So at this point, I don't want to give the division by any stretch to the yeah. Braves, but they are they have if if they came in today with a sixty percent chance of winning the division, it probably went up to seventy. Yeah. So at this point, you should also start. We should start looking at the wild card, like we have been all year, but maybe pay a little bit more attention to the other teams in the wild card race. The Cubs didn't really do much. Um, at the deadline, they're they in flipped. the wild card race. Uh, didn't they flip Martin 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 Maldonado? Maldonado? Yeah. Beyond yeah. that, yeah, didn't really add much. Um, the Philly, oh, they got Castellanos. Castellanos, that's yeah. right. Okay, so there's a move. The Phillies got Corey Dickerson, who's an outfielder, um, and they got Jason Vargas. But still, I still think that team is just a powder keg ready to explode. They have had so many issues. They have a a. Uh, they they have a, a team that was kind of built on the fly, has a plenty of rotation issues. They have a starter who has a bone spur. They have plenty of issues right now. I think the way, at least, that they've been playing over the last few months, obviously the Phillies have had a good couple weeks, but I think the Nats are still a better team right now than the Phillies. Yeah. Um, beyond that, you got to worry about the Brewers. you got to worry maybe about the Giants, although I think they'll fall out. And um, the Diamondbacks just traded the race in Zach Greinke. So this could come down to probably a five-team race for that two wild-card spot. Well, I'm looking over your shoulder right now. and You've got so, the Cubs, Phillies, Nats. Right. But look, all right, so Nats are tied for the second wild-card. We have the Giants two and a half games back, Arizona three and a half games back. Guess where the Nats are going this weekend? Arizona. Arizona for three games and then to San Francisco for three games. <laughs> so it's not like, oh, we made our moves, everything's good. You still got to play ball. Yeah. Because now you're playing, you could be in where the, where the Diamondbacks are right now this time next week yeah. if you don't play well in the next six games. And it's frustrating that the Nats didn't come out better of that Brave series. Now you just got to put that behind you and just bury these teams. Yeah. And you then just have to bury them into the standings and just, you know, put them away. And then you to, to finish off that road trip, you go play the Mets. And we, we've said we're not going to talk about the Mets, but still they're <laughs> there and they're a division you rival. you got to take care of you business. you got to take yeah. care of them. you got to take care of business. Then on your homestand, uh, you finish off that your next homestand with the Brewers yeah. in, in town. And going into – and then you also have to go to the Cubs. I mean, yeah. there's there's a lot of baseball left to be played, Paul, in important games. It's not like these three deals – You the question was, you know, of these three teams who came out – the best, yeah. I say the Braves, but I still give Mike Rizzo a ton of credit. I honestly yeah. think, came, I honestly thought coming into today, the National he wasn't gonna be able to make a move, considering where the farm system was, the money situation, and I, I just and knowing teams, knowing that teams knew that he was desperate for bullpen help, that they could probably ask a, a king's ransom for help because like again, the Nationals needed to help. But I got to give him credit that he, he did it again. I mean, it's I, who knows how these guys are going to pay off, but at least, like we said, fresh arms in here. Yeah. So I think the, Na- the Nationals, just because they didn't get Shane Green, doesn't mean that they did not have a good trade deadline day. Yeah. And, and again, 
just because it's a good trailer deadline, it doesn't mean your season is safe and fixed. You still got to go out and win these games. You play the Braves four more times in Atlanta. You play the Phillies five more times. Um, it's just you could play the Cardinals, who could be a team that's back in the wild card race by mid September. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's been a good day. I think they made good, smart moves, um, but it's not a cure all. No, and they're but of the of the teams that made major moves at the deadline. You could argue, you know, Houston maybe had the best day. I mean, they made the biggest splash. Yeah, the best week or so, the best trade deadline when they got Zach Greinke. Um, you could argue... Are, are, is Houston World Series favorites, or that's still Dodgers right now, you think? Or Yankees? It's. I think it's got to be the Dodgers until you prove me otherwise, until you prove them otherwise, but they're going to be darn good. I mean, yeah. at the top of that rotation, Justin Verlander, Zach Greinke... Yeah, that is filth. Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole, uh, th- that is that is absolute filth. They're, they're definitely, I think, the favorites in the, in AL, the AL. I, w- I would argue. Yeah, sorry to uh, Yankees fans in the in the room. And to um, Brendan's nodding. Yeah, but um, in, in terms of you know, and you could argue that the Indians had a good deadline as well, um, because if you go into the day think, or go go into the week thinking they're absolutely going to trade Trevor Bauer, then they got in theory good return for him, so they had an okay deadline. The Rays added some pieces. They had a good deadline. In terms of National League teams, the Braves, but I think it's the Nats are probably had the second best deadline of any yeah. of these teams. Yeah, I think so. They addressed the need. Like we said, they they kind of cross all the check boxes. Right? Cross all the check boxes? Checked all the cross boxes? Check all the... Words. Checked all the boxes. <laughs> They're just regular boxes, They crossed right? all those checkies. They crossed all those checks. They dot the eyes and they cross them too. And they boxed it and sent it out. And a, and a bag full of money. No, they they got what they needed. They did not pay a king's ransom for it. Yeah. Let's see how it plays out. Yeah. I, I think they can't get worse, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, they're not going to get worse. They're, they're, I, they're, I would knock on wood. I would hope they don't. They're, they can't they get are worse. a better team today than they were yesterday. Right. And you get some guys out of this bullpen that maybe have didn't belong, have not are not major league ready yet. Yeah. Um, and aren't suited for a postseason run like you, this. Yeah, you, you replaced worse players with better players. Right. So, so they are better off. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, but they also have huge question marks. Max yeah. Scherzer, when is he going to come back? You know, how is he going to sustain? They did not address the fifth starter question. So yeah. you have to ride Joe Ross, Eric Fetty, Austin Voth for the rest of the season. Yeah. Assuming Max, because right now, Eric Fetty and Joe Ross are your five. We're four or five guys until Max comes back. Yeah. So, I mean, they have other areas of question, but bullpen right now has been kind of solidified. Patched up. And Not solidified. Patched yeah, up. Yeah. And the baton has been passed from Mike Rizzo to Davey Martinez. He yeah. got the pieces. Yep. You can't do much I else. I did what I could for you. Can't make any August waiver trades. Nope. He's, he is handing it. It is completely residing with the guys. This is the team that you have, and you're moving forward. Yep. I expect this team to be. I mean, it's also going to be fun. I mean, we haven't had yeah. a playoff run like this um, in the what coming on twenty years at fifteen years that the Nationals have been in DC. So yeah. uh, every year, someone's run away with it. So this is going to be kind of fun, exciting, especially you know, just imagine one a wild card game in DC against the Phillies, Hunter Strickland versus Bryce Harper. <laughs> That's exactly what I was Let's thinking. Let's go, baby. Can you imagine? No, game, I will not, because we will be there, and I will be losing my mind. <laughs> game comes down to, the, like, the seventh, eighth inning, and they throw Hunter Strickland in. Yep. Oh, my God. Yep. Just wild. Just All right, Bobby, crazy. what's your Twitter handle? Uh, at Bobby underscore Blanco. Paul, where can the people find you? At Paul Mancano. Of course, check us out at Masson Nationals on Twitter. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, SoundCloud, SoundCloud Spotify, YouTube, Mass and All Access Facebook page. Uh, check us out. Rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And again, more trade deadline coverage at MassInSports.com. We'll catch you later.